Hi friends, it's Deanna here today. And today we are sewing the kids button A-line skirt. Super cute um, and super sweet. Um, this one is a pattern that can be done with woven. So that's really, really cool because sometimes we wanna use some of the cute woven colors and patterns. Um, and so let's get started. But before I do, let me remind you about our fun fan giveaway, a $50 Alien Mag gift certificate. And all you have to do is subscribe to our channel and comment below one of our participating videos and you will be entered for a giveaway. So just go ahead and do that right now. If you're not uh, subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and comment below and you will be entered for our giveaway, a $50 Alien Mag gift certificate. So go ahead and do that. Uh, I've got my pieces already cut out. You know, I find that sometimes it's easier to work if I steam my fabric first, but I don't always do that. So I just give it a little quick steam so that it's ready. Um, I'm gonna turn it, and this is my wrong side, wrong side up, and I'm going to fold the straight edge. See how over here is the A-line edge. This is the one of the front pieces of my skirt. I'm gonna fold the wrong side towards the, I mean, the. this is the wrong side of the fabric. I'm gonna fold my fabric towards the wrong side and I'm gonna fold, I'm gonna fold it three, three eighths of an inch in and I'm going to fold that down all the way down. three-eighths of an inch. So there it is, fold it down, okay? And now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my uh, interfacing, and I'm gonna lift that fold up, and I'm gonna put that interfacing right along the edge of that fold, so it's kind of in there. And then you're gonna attach that interfacing however your instruction manual does it, Mine just needs a little bit of steam and heat. And there it is. As you can tell, it's, see, it's like tucked in there. Right at the raw edge. Uh, right at the, I'm sorry, right at the uh, crease. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and fold it again down so that that three eighths of an inch is tucked in under and you're going to tuck that right over. So that will be your placket there it is because we're gonna add buttons or snaps we need a thicker surface right here for a placket so that when they go to a button or whatever it doesn't rip the button off or it doesn't rip the fabric and sometimes that happens if you don't put a, a nice placket on there so we're gonna go ahead and top stitch along that raw edge now you can do it from the bottom if you want or you can do it from the top it is up to you um, I've done it from both sides. I think I'm going to go ahead and do it from the bottom on this time just because I can so I can come really close to the edge and my sewing machine really looks the same both ways as you can I'll show you um, this was I already did my one side and I, I, I top stitch it from the top and it just looks really nice from the back as well. So I'm just going to do it the other way around uh, but it is up to you if you want to come from the top or from the bottom. So let's go ahead and sew that top stitch just a straight stitch right along the edge so that you can catch that down. Make sure it's close so you can catch that 3 8 inch right there on the edge. So come all the way across the edge of that seam. All right, so once that is done, you're gonna grab your pattern piece. And as you can see, here's my buttonholes. And so what I did is I folded this uh, edge right here because this is my placket, so I already got rid of it. And I went ahead and on my uh, buttonholes, I went ahead and opened like a little area right there with scissors. That way I can mark my fabric uh, where my buttons are gonna go. So I'm just placing it right on top. And honestly, I'm just using a pencil right now. Probably not the best thing. Um, if you have fabric marker or chalk, uh, whatever you want to use to mark those buttonholes. So I'm just marking them and I'm doing the same thing. This is all, I'm doing the same exact thing for both sides of the skirt front. Okay, so now I have marked 
my buttonhole button areas right there and I am going to look at my skirt now the buttonholes are going to go on the left so this is my left one so I'm gonna put my buttonholes on here and it is up to you really how you want to make those buttonholes if your buttonhole is very uh, uh, long like if your button is very big you can go up and down um, you can go sideways uh, just make sure that it's gonna fit in that area right there so if you want to right now you can go ahead and do the buttonholes right now um, but if you want to wait until you put it all together you can do that sometimes it's easier to do the buttonholes now that it's just a one piece instead of a bulky skirt um, but do not put your buttons on yet because you're gonna be doing some other steps and they might get in the way or if you're doing snaps don't put those on yet you can you do that at the end um, but we, I'm gonna go ahead and do my buttonholes now so let's go ahead and do that i will show you a couple now if you didn't want to do a bunch of buttonholes because i know how annoying they can be um yeah i don't like them that much either you can do like the first three the first top three as buttonholes okay and then uh do the um the rest could just put it overlap it and sew them together sometimes i like to do that too so um but you will need at least a couple first the first maybe three um so that you can they can pull their uh skirt up okay because it is a it's got a, a stretch on the back but still um but other than that you can go ahead and do that so let's go ahead and sew some buttonholes to prep my buttonhole how big i'm going to sew that buttonhole i'm gonna put my button right there on top of my area like right at the middle and what i'm gonna do is i am going to see how big my button is and so that i know how big of a uh buttonhole i need to make okay so this one looks to be about uh ooh, just a little bit over yeah, a bit, about three quarters of an inch big is how big this button is. So I'm going to know, I'm going to probably make that, uh, go ahead and make that um, uh, buttonhole maybe almost about an inch. That way it can fit in there nicely. So I'm going to meet put that half an inch mark right over that dot that I made. And if you want to go up and down, I'm going this way, up and down. Um, and I make a mark that way I know where I start my buttonhole and then where I ended I am only going to uh, do buttonhole for the first three and then the waistband um, just because I am that type of person who is very lazy about buttonholes I might regret it later uh, but we'll see if I do then I can always make buttonholes more buttonholes later um, you know I'll just sew it over and if it doesn't work out and, and they don't really like it my little niece who I'm making this for, then I can always just take the button off and add buttonholes. So I'm just gonna go for the easy way out because that's what I do. All right, so there's my button areas. So I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and sew the buttonholes. All right, so I have a buttonhole foot, but it is broken and I haven't been able to get a new one yet. So I'm just using a broken buttonhole foot. What it usually has is this little like straight tail right here which guides me as i'm sewing my buttonhole on my sewing machine i have a setting for buttonholes so i just have to go to that setting and start um, but some of you who don't have a setting on your sewing machine to do buttonholes if you start at the bottom okay well mine goes backwards but you would start at the top and do a close knit zigzag stitch all the way from the first dot all the way down to the second dot then you would go sideways with your needle so just like a uh uh zero uh with i mean um zero length zigzag back and forth and then you would turn uh, go over just a tiny bit and go back you can use your backwards button go back and do your zigzag tight zigzag again or you can you know turn your fabric and go forward and do your tight zigzag again right next to it get to the front and do that zero uh length uh zigzag again to close up that um buttonhole so i mean i know buttonholes can be a little bit scary at times but they're really not too bad i'm gonna go ahead and place my needle where it's supposed to be and i'm gonna start with my buttonhole see mine just kind of does its own thing so i just kind of have to guide it a little bit and i that buttonhole the only uh foot the only thing it does is make sure that i'm keeping that button uh that buttonhole zigzag stitch right there where it's supposed to be so then when i get to the other spot 
on mine, I just have to push a button and it comes back over and it does the back and forth and then it comes back and finishes that zigzag, that um, buttonhole. Does your machine have a buttonhole uh, option or do you have to do the zigzag option? And there it is, my buttonhole. It's a little bit off right there, but that's okay because when I open it, I'm gonna put it right on top of my skirt and I'm gonna hit the that right in the middle, I'm gonna mark my other side of my skirt exactly where I'm gonna put that button. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish those other two and then we'll move on to the next step. Once you have those buttonholes made, and I think I'm gonna have to go all the way down and do buttonholes because these are really big buttonholes, which means I think you'll be able to see them uh, because my button is a weird shape, so it has to go in a different way. So I might have to go finish up those buttonholes later, but that's okay, it's not too bad. We're gonna go and move on to our waistband. So we've got two waistbands, um, two front waistbands, I'm sorry, and two and one back uh, because we have obviously the front and the back uh, are the uh, separate. So I'm gonna grab one of my front waistbands and this is the wrong side up. I'm going to fold it down the raw edge. I'm gonna fold it down three um, eighths of an inch, okay, and steam. And I'm gonna do that out for the top and I am going to do that for the bottom as well. It's hot. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and fold it down the middle, meeting those raw edges, to, not, not raw anymore because it's folded. So meeting those folded edges together to give it that middle crease. Woo. I moved off a little bit right here. I'm gonna do it again because it wasn't straight. Good steam. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open it up, the, the little 3 8 seam, and I'm gonna grab my interfacing and I'm gonna put it right in there along that edge. As you can see, it is, it's in there, just like I did the waistband, right in there, right along the edge. And then you're gonna steam it on. or however your uh, interfacing manual asks you to do it. I'm gonna go to the side and I'm gonna grab one of the sides and one of the sides is gonna go in 3 eighths of an inch and the other side is gonna stay raw because that other side I'm gonna attach to my back waistband but this, uh, this is gonna be my front side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same exact thing to our other side and we're gonna do the same exact thing to our back waistband, but except for folding the raw edges at the end. You don't fold the raw edge uh, for this one, for the back waistband, because it's gonna be attached to that one, so you don't have to have a, a straight edge like this. So now when I do it to this one though, I'm gonna make sure that they face each other. So the side that I'm gonna have to fold in 3 eighths is gonna be the side that faces this side, because you know this is gonna be on this is gonna be on one side and this is gonna be on the other side of my skirt. So the outside has to match. So make sure that you have the same side done, not the other side, okay? So let me go ahead and do that for this one. Once we've finished setting all these up, we're gonna open this uh, waistband. This is my back waistband. And we're going to go ahead and grab our sides, our fronts. And that side that we left raw, we're going to put it right on top of the side that we have raw on our waistband, our back waistband. So we're attaching <clears throat> the back and the front waistband together at the sides. And then I'm gonna attach the other one so that raw edge should be on the other side together. And now I'm gonna go ahead and sew that raw edge right there together to attach them right there at the raw edge. All right, so once we've attached them together, 
we're gonna go ahead and open just steam that steam allowance open and as you can see i accidentally put my uh and i just did a straight stitch on my sewing machine so now i'm just opening this seam right here just opening it okay as you can see i put my uh interfacing at the bottom right? throwing things everywhere There's my scissors my interfacing at the bottom on this side accidentally but that doesn't matter there's interfacing in there somewhere so it's good it's all good once you open it that's going to go again it's going to have that three uh three eighths in three eighths of an inch right there fold you got to keep that fold for later okay so we're going to put this band aside for a little bit and we're going to work on our pocket all right so what we're going to do is we're going to grab our pocket now you have if you're doing two pockets you're going to have four pieces because we're going to use one as our backing so we're going to grab our pockets and face them right sides together like so and i'm going to pin Ooh, mail and I'm going to start at the top and go all the way up and around and down. And we're going to sew with a straight stitch, um, one quarter of an inch in from the edge. And we're going to just sew all the way around to put these both together. Once I've sewn all the way around, we want to go ahead and grab our scissors. You can use regular scissors. I have my little scissors somewhere, but I don't know where they are. Or you can use uh, uh, any kind of trimming tools that you have and I'm just kind of trimming the edge right there and I'm going to do the same on this side around the corner around the rounded edge to take away some of that bulk okay and then if you want you can um there it is you can go ahead and trim some of that seam allowance if you want to give it less bulk do not cut the thread you don't want to cut the thread because then obviously your pocket won't be put together anymore so i'm just trimming some of that seam allowance extra seam allowance on the sides and you don't really have to i just like to because that way my pocket will be nice and straight and i keep dropping things okay now through that gap that we left at the top we're gonna turn our pocket around turn it around and use any kind of tool. I have this little handy tool from my, I actually I think this one is from my Cricut machine, but sometimes I use my, um, the tweezers that come with my sewing machine or even a pencil. And I'm just like pulling out at those edges to make it nice and straight and everything. Then the seam allowance right here, you're just gonna fold it in, tuck all those threads in there and then steam that pocket what a cute little pocket my cute little pocket is ready now we're going to go up here at the top and top stitch a quarter of an inch in because when we sew this pocket onto our skirt we will not uh want to sew the top that way they can stick their hand in there and put stuff in their pocket so you want to just sew a quarter of an inch on right here and then we're going to grab after i do that i'm going to grab my my skirt panel and I'm gonna grab my pattern piece one more time. And as you can see, here's my where my um, pocket's gonna go. So you can either just cut this out, this piece out of your pattern piece, and then you just be able to mark it. I like to do things the hard way, I don't know why. So we're gonna just fold it down and mark where is where my pocket's supposed to be at. So there are my marks, and I'm gonna put my pocket right there. Once remember first you need to sew up top stitch the top so i'm gonna go top stitch to top once i've top stitched the top i'm going to go all the way around the edges and sew it onto my skirt okay so i'm going all the way down around and up top stitching around the edge to sew my pocket into my skirt okay and i'm going to do the same thing for both pockets and both sides of my skirt pockets are on Remove those pins. I did the same thing to both my pockets and now they've both been sewn on. So I've got my skirt with my two pockets 
in my back. Now, we're gonna put those together, but because of this being a woven pattern, we're going to go a little bit and we're going to go ahead and, and, um, and finish those raw edges of our skirt first. So go ahead and finish the raw edges of your skirt because woven sometimes likes to unravel. I say sometimes, but I mean all the time. And um, I, sometimes a just a little seam allowance is not enough and you don't want it to shred on you and then come apart. So, and we know how rough kids are on skirts and not just kids, but you know, on a regular everyday basis. Um, so we wanna go ahead and finish that raw edge of all your sides. So I finished these both sides on my back piece and I just went in with a uh, serger and I did a uh, no seam allowance. I mean, I didn't cut anything with my knife. I just went straight through and then, or you can do a zigzag stitch in your sewing machine. And then this is the outer edge of your skirt front. So both of them, I did the outer edge. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put them together. So I'm going to grab my front, my back right side up and I'm going to steam it a little bit because I think it looks better when it's steamed <laughs> right side up on my board and then I'm gonna grab my front put one on this side and matching those raw edges which are not raw anymore they are now um, uh, finished matching those finished edges <laughs> and then I'm gonna put the other one right on top on the other side doing the same thing again matching those finished edges and then I'm going to go ahead and sew it on my sewing machine uh, right together. And I'm just doing a straight stitch on my sewing machine and sewing them together right there and right here. Woo, that pin just went flying. Flying, soaring. <laughs> All right, let's do it. All right, I've sewn it up, sewn it up. Now we're gonna go ahead and open that seam allowance right there. Just open where, right there, and steam it open. So hot. There's my one seam. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other one. And there's my other seam. How cute it's going to be. All right, now I'm gonna place my skirt face up on my board. Ah, two tomatoes. I brought both of my tomatoes to play today. Ooh, yes, hi, how are you? <laughs> Yes, there's something wrong with me. No, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm just kidding. I'm fun. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and grab our waistband and we're going to put our waistband right on top of our skirt and we're gonna match up. You see where our, our, our uh, seams are. We're matching that up. You know, our seams are open right there and then all the way in the back. In the back. And the other seam and all the way around the front so I have it at the raw edge and they're raw edges together but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go sew and I'm gonna sew right over where that uh, folded edges you see that three uh, three eighths of an inch right there you're gonna go through right there and top stitch sew it together right there and over here is going you're gonna have a get a lap you're gonna have a little piece hanging over on the edge that little piece right there and you're gonna have it over here as well so you're gonna have a little bit of of lap right here at the end so don't worry about it don't you know, don't think, oh, no, I did something wrong. No, you didn't. You're going to have a little piece right there because when we go to sew this onto the together, we're going to fold it down and everything. So just sew it together at the raw edge. No, not at the raw edge. At that crease right there, right on top of that crease, we're going to sew them together. My waistband, I have sewn it together right there at the, at the fold. I'm going to push this seam up and only... And only on the back, we're gonna grab our waistband, see how it's still folded there, and we're going to bring it, let me make sure I steam these down, because right here in the corners, they wanna come up. 
I don't want them. I want that allowance to be folded down. I'm going to bring that right down, right over at that crease. Okay. And only my waistband, I'm going to top stitch right here, that waistband down. Okay. Um, because then we're going to first fit our elastic in there because our waistband has elastic in the back. Um, so we want to go ahead and top stitch this first before, I mean, uh, before we do the front. So we're just going from seam to seam and we're top stitching that waistband down. Um, you can do it from the front or from the back. Um, but I think I would for just for a better look, I would do it from the front. That way you go out along that front edge instead of doing it along uh, instead of doing it from this side and then you can't tell exactly where you are over here. So I always like to do it from the top so I can have a better looking side in the top. And then we're going to go ahead and sew that and then we'll fit our elastic in and I'll show you how to do that. Once we've sewn that waistband on the back, we're going to grab our elastic and we're going to put a pin on it. I'm just going to use a pin. You can use whatever tool you have and I'm going to thread it through that back waistband. Now, before I go all the way through, I'm just gonna leave a quarter inch of elastic right here at the edge, right there. I can go a little bit farther in. There we go. And as you can see right there, you can see my elastic still out. I'm gonna sew right over that ditch right there, that seam, and I'm gonna catch my elastic right there so it doesn't pull all the way through. So let me go ahead and sew right there. Now that it's sewn right there on that ditch, we're gonna pull, keep pulling it all the way out to the other side. Now it starts actually gathering it when before it was just going through because it's tight right there. So it's gonna just gather. And then we're gonna come out here another quarter of an inch like we did on the other side. And we're gonna sew it together right here at this raw edge. I mean, not the raw edge. You're going to sew the ditch right here on this seam to attach that elastic so it doesn't come bouncing straight back. So just a straight stitch right over there, back and forth, back and forth, so that you can catch your elastic. The back waistband is done. We're going to move on to our sides. So we've got our seam allowance is going to go up, and this is going to come right down over just like we did our waistband. I'm going to get rid of some thread. Um, so we're going to make sure that it's down, <clears throat> but then right here at the edge, make sure that that folded edge is folded in. That's, that's the allowance that we folded earlier. Make sure that's folded in when you fold it over like so. That way it will be encased in there when you go to sew it all the way around. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and pin that waistband because we're going to sew the waistband first. Don't sew this part yet because you will sew that part when you sew all the way around. So we're going to go ahead and pin right here on the waistband. I'm going to pin right here too so that I can keep that closed. So when I go to sew it, it, is, it stays closed. And then right here. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do the same for the other side and then we're going to top stitch that closed. I'm going to do the same for the other side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sew. Okay, so if you're struggling to get that just right, make sure you use a lot of steam right here when you're folding these down uh, because that steam will help you put them down. And actually some people I think also use um, like starch right there to help it stay straight and down as they start. Um, I wanna go a little bit back and forth right here at the beginning. So that way is really nice and, and set. And here we go all the way down. Remove that pin. I don't want to run over it and break my needle now that we're almost at the home stretch. And then I'm just going to sew all the way down. And I'm going to go back and forth right here at that edge. And our, our waistband is done. 
Are you so excited? I know I am. We are almost done. This is looking super cute. We just need to top stitch the front and um, do our, our hem. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and prep our hem first. And it's going to be a half an inch rolled in. Go a half an inch in. Oh, I have fuzz sticking to me. And then we're going to do another half an inch fold. So we're gonna do one half an inch fold, going all the way around. And then we're gonna grab it again, I'm sorry. And then we're gonna grab it again and half an inch fold one more time. Because of this being woven, you need to have that double fold or you can go ahead and, and finish that edge however you'd like to. But you can just do like with knit, that's really hot. With knits, you can just do one fold because it doesn't unravel, but um, wovens unravels. So if you only do that one fold, it will unravel on you and uh, that will not be good. So we're doing that double fold. Once that is all the way steamed down, we're going to start at the top of the waistband and we're gonna go top stitch all the way down and all the way around the whole thing, okay? And top stitch and all the way and then come right back up the outer edge and we'll be basically done. We'll just have to attach our buttons and our little skirt is done. So let me go ahead and top stitch all the way around. All right, I went all the way around and I hemmed, all, I mean, I, I top stitch all the way around my waistband and my hem. How stinking cute is this? Now, what we have to do is remember, go ahead and finish my buttonholes. Um, if I'm going to do them all. And then also you got to do a buttonhole for your waistband right here as well. Don't forget that because you need a buttonhole to button it on and off. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the buttonholes that I didn't do yet and my waistband buttonhole and we will be done. How cute. Perfect. All right, we are done with our skirt. I finished my buttonholes. I put one button on so you could see it. I'm gonna finish putting them all on and then I'm gonna show you, I'll post a picture of it. I opened all my buttonholes already. So what I like to do is, I know I already kind of placed the markings on it, um, but I wanna make sure that it is right in the center of my, uh, my sewn buttonholes because I, you know, sometimes human error, you get a little crooked or a little uh, sided. So I always put it right on top when my holes are already open and I use something else. I know right now I'm using a pen, but I make sure I go back in and mark exactly where I bought one of my buttons. It's a little bit off from what it was supposed to be, but it's right there. And that's where I'm gonna go back in and grab my button and put it on. Now, I do buttons by hand. I don't know, um, some people will have a uh, sewing machine that does their buttons for themselves. You have an attachment. I'm sure I do somewhere, but I just like doing buttons by hand. So I just do them by hand. I put it right over in the middle of that spot. And then I use just needle and thread and just work on it. And I like to actually do this a lot when I'm like sitting there watching TV. And it's kind of like just a mindless thing to do just to sit there and, and uh, sew a button on. So I'll probably go and watch a little TV and sew my other buttons on and then come back and show you a picture of my finished skirt. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you like this skirt just as much as I do. Um, I can't wait to see your makes. Please post them, share them on our Facebook or Instagram page or in link is below. We wanna see what you're making and we want you to see what everybody else is making so you can be inspired. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Comment, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.